By the end of this video, I'm gonna turn this giant pile of sticks into a $6,000 kitchen table. And after all the trouble we've had on this table, like the lumber almost shredding apart like string cheese, we are so scared that the customer is going to hate this table. Three, two, two one. one. We just sold our first kitchen table in our business. Woo! This is what $1,300 of white oak looks like. <laughs> This week, we finally finished the kitchen table build that we've been working on. And after all the trouble we've had on this table, like the lumber almost shredding apart like string cheese, we are so scared that the customer is going to hate this table. This isn't our first kitchen table build, but it's the first kitchen table build that we've built and sold in our new business. The clients are a fellow Air Force reservist and his wife. They're amazing people and we really want to make them super happy. And we're just so nervous because this table is going to be the centerpiece of all their family time. The wood that we purchased for this table originally was absolute garbage. A lot of this lumber has cracks all through it. They've got cracks all through the entire bottom. This whole piece of wood is punky. All rotted away. What we got was not what we paid for. I mean, we made a whole video about it, so you woodworking nerds can go watch that if you want to. But bottom line, the first batch of lumber we got was not properly dried. After they cut the tree down, they have to bake the wood to get all the moisture out of it, and they did that way too hot, way too fast. You know how when you're baking biscuits or cinnamon rolls and you think, oh, well, I need to do it a little faster, so I'll just turn the temperature up a little bit, and then you end up setting off a fire alarm? That's sort of what happened with this lumber. It got baked too hot, too fast, and it started to just shred apart. Not only is this very ugly, but it's gonna continue to crack over time, and it's not as structurally sound as it would be if it was dried properly. But fortunately, the lumber dealer swapped out the old lumber with new lumber, and we were back at it. Much better.
dealt with a lot of problems in this project. We learned so much. And when we get to the end of a project, this always happens. All we can see are the flaws, the mistakes, the slip ups, and the tiny little hints of evidence that we had a screw up earlier in the process. All of this snowballs and we just get so worried that the customer is gonna hate the piece. All they're gonna see are the same flaws that we see. We can't see the piece for what it is anymore. All we can see are the mistakes wrapped up in it. It's called the maker's curse. If you've ever built anything before, you know that all you see are the flaws and imperfections in your work. You can't see it for what it is, which is beauty and elegance and utility. So with this table, we've lost the wow factor, for ourselves anyways. It's hard to look at it and see the same thing that the customer is going to see. exactly like the design that we made in a program called SketchUp. It's kind of scary how identical they look. 
If you want to know how we sold a table like this or how we found somebody who wanted to buy one, check out the link below the like button for our community of makers who are all interested in starting and running a business. It's called the Stud Stack. That's where we share tips and strategies for running our businesses. Plus, you can get some amazing advice from other makers running their businesses too. I talk about all the rest of the bonuses and the giveaways that we do in the group, but that would take a little too much time away from the video. You can find all the list of benefits on the cheesy sales page in the link below. I'm so excited for this table. I am also nervous. I know she's gonna love it, but I'm just scared she's gonna hate it. I do this every single time that I build a project. I'm so scared that they're gonna hate it because I can't see it for what it is. All I see are the flaws, but that's okay. Just gotta trust past experience and know that she's gonna be happy. Plus we get all these bougie table decorations to help just kick it up a notch. Jenny's also gonna pick up flowers and we're giving them a free cutting board as a thank you for going with us for custom furniture. It's little things like that that just blow the perceived value out of the water and there's no way she's gonna be upset. We've gotta quit obsessing over and worrying about this table. It's good enough. If we keep overworking it, we're gonna lose money on this job and we're also gonna lose our sanity. And if we think she's gonna hate it, she will hate it. If we're nervous or timid or not confident about the table on delivery, she's gonna pick up on that. She's gonna feel that from us. She can feel our vibe, as woo-woo as that sounds. Our emotional state is gonna influence her emotional state on delivery. So we might as well choose confidence. Cause if we're not confident about the table, she's not gonna be confident about the table. I'm judging myself as if this is a $20,000 kitchen table. It's not, it's a $6,000 kitchen table. And with the table that we've built and the staging decorations that Jenny's gonna put on it and giving them a cutting board as a thank you for hiring us, she is gonna be more than blown away by this table. I hope. <laughs> All right, now. Say it. Don't say it. Not saying it. Not saying it. Well, you think she liked it? I think she loved it. Honest opinion is I almost started crying because she almost started crying. We all almost started crying. I did get choked up there for a second. I did. Get, I, did get, I got choked up. It's a good day. It was really good. Can you day. believe we were worried she'd hate it? I. It was in the back of my head. I was like, what do we do if she walks in and just stares and like, <whistles> oof. But hey, she almost cried. We almost cried. It was a good day. You almost cried. And everybody got paid. <laughs> Payday. You guys, she loved this table, just like we hoped she would. She was laughing, she was crying, her whole family was even there. It just, it doesn't get any better than that. And we have to lock this away as a core memory. We have to choose confidence and solidarity for our work. Yes, we're worried and scared, but if we choose to entertain those fears rather than conquering them, we're gonna create the reality that we're scared of happening in the first place. And we don't have time for that because we've got another table to build. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the plan.